What's up everybody? Blue Gabe. I just showed up to St. Augustine and my good buddy Ian, who's also known as Tug Trash on Instagram, is dealing with something right now that is <laughs> one of the most frustrating parts of all of us outdoorsmen's life. He's misplaced something. And a lot of people think, well, we just were forgetful and we, we just, our brains in the gutter. Well, when you do things like what we do, and he's just like me, where's he at? Right there. We don't just go deer hunting. We don't just go fishing. No, we do everything and then some. So we have so much crap laying around that we often lose it. But that's just part of life. We are getting ready to go oystering. And before we do, I got to give a huge shout out to the Farmer's Dog for sponsoring this video. Farmer's Dog is fresh food made out of fresh ingredients and it's delivered straight to your door. Now I've been feeding it to Redneck for a while and this dog has come alive. Better breath, he's healthier, he's more vibrant. Well, Ian's got an awesome crazy dog that I don't think needs any more energy, but he could probably use a little bit better breath. Mullet, you wanna try some food? Now when it's delivered to your door, it comes in this awesome little cooler box and it stays completely frozen. He's like, what's he bringing out of this box? What you got, Mullet? What you got? Now you can see it's frozen. So I've got to thaw it out and we're gonna see if he likes it. Come here, Mullet, I brought you something very special. I guess it's a win. Ian said he's already had breakfast and look at him digging in. <laughs> so another cool thing about Farmer's Dog is they have different meats. They have chicken and beef. It's so easy and so convenient. You don't need to waste money going to Walmart, to the gas station to get dog food. It's shipped to your door. You don't have to worry about it thawing out if it shows up while you're at work. I opened this box. This is actually a new box that I just received. I opened it this morning and took some for Redneck out and I brought mullet some and it's still frozen. I thawed this out, took two minutes in the sink with some warm water and he's not even paying us any attention. What do you think mullet? Is that good? I don't know if Redneck's gonna agree with me bringing you his dog food. So I'm sure most of you already know this, but with your big traditional dog food companies, they're made out of really high processed ingredients that you can't even pronounce. With the farmer's dog, they're made out of only the freshest ingredients. So if you're interested in getting the farmer's dog, go to the link in the description below this video and check it out and get some for your pet today. So enough of talking about dog poo. Let me tell y'all something that you don't know about me. Let me, let me explain something to y'all. My favorite thing in the whole wide world to eat is a filet of fish sandwich from McDonald's. Mm -hmm. You don't get no better. I have always been given a hard time by all my buddies for eating the filet of fish, but it don't get no better. Another thing I want to tell you about we're in St. Augustine and they got noceums, gnats that are like small pterodactyls that will eat you alive. If you live anywhere where there's noceums, you see that right there? Bailey Griffith's dad told me about it. He lives in Steenahatchee. He actually owns the Steenahatchee River Club. That right there. Get you some. We were just at his house getting ready and they were eating me alive. You spray some of that stuff on you, they'll no longer eat you. So anyhow, we got the SS Minnow behind us. We're pulling up to a bait shop. What are we going to get for bait? We're going to see what they got. Probably mud minnows or shrimp. So I thought we were just going oystering, but apparently we're going fishing too. And the best part about today, I don't have to do nothing but tag along and film it. Ian has started his own YouTube channel. He's been big on TikTok, but now he's doing YouTube. What is it? Tug Trash Outdoors. We just have to write that on the screen. Tug yeah. Trash. Tug. T-U-G. Trash. Outdoors. So we're at oldest city bait and tackle i don't know if you know much about saint augustine but this place has a ton of history and apparently excuse me this bait shop does too but did you know you were going to be on youtube today no i did not <laughs> <laughs> what do you got, got shrimp or no, you got mud minnows no, no scramps or mud minnows no, we have shrimp. oh okay good you got any crickets? Uh, no oh, no. oh, this is a shrimping net. See that tape? If you follow along, you've seen any of my shrimping videos. 
that right there makes the net instead of going like this makes it go like that and that's how you catch them with it why are you shopping you know you don't need anything else <laughs> you telling me you don't buy new jig heads every single time you go fishing do i buy new stuff every if i had all the money of all the stuff that like it's just rusted out in my boat and i never used hmm. i'd be rich i do like throwing a gulp shrimp for what are we fishing for flounder flounder or whatever red fish. little flounder pounder all right we're getting four dozen shrimp we'll see y'all at the boat ramp Thing. We might be out till tomorrow morning this time, so I've got my rubber boots, got me a jacket, got my frog tog rain gear, we got a grill, some scripts of course. Do we need a cat set? Probably not. Do we need a survival kit? We gotta untie the bucket though. <laughs> For those of y'all that wonder how I keep my camera gear pretty much safe and dry, I have this dry box and I keep pretty much all my GoPros and my extra batteries in there. Just keeps me a little bit organized more than normal. I don't take it everywhere, but on a little boat like this where we're subjected to get wet, I definitely bring it. I can put my cell phone in it, extra batteries, pretty much all of my necessities. Uh, good thing it's blowing 25 miles an hour. I know it, man. It, dude, this time of year, don't quit. Yeah, it's definitely cooking. But that's all right. Looks like we got an outgoing tide. The tide should be low in about an hour, and that's what we're looking for. Then we're going to go fish some docks. Are we fishing before we oyster or vice versa? I'm not sure yet. He's not sure yet. We're just going out. One thing's cool is y'all are going to see it as we're doing it. I'm sort of making this a vlog style catch, clean, and cook. Just taking you along for the ride. Let me introduce y'all to the SS Minnow. <laughs> y'all, this is a serious yacht we got right here. Some local boys right here getting ready to go sheep's head, fishing. We ain't got much room, but we got a boat and that's all we need. I would have died to have this thing right here when I was young. Right? Oh my goodness. I still feel like a little kid when I'm driving it. That's why I have it. I'm telling you. What's it about 12, 13 feet? It's 14 feet. 14 feet. I love it. Dude, we could use this on the Autumn Hall deer hunting. Got, yeah. a, got a little grill, got some charcoal. We're ready to rip. How far ready. are we running? Not far, about a mile. All right. I'm not a huge fan of them, but the way Ian makes them, they are good. The tide's not falling quite to where he wants it, I but I just informed him that we don't need four bushels. We only need about 14 oysters, and then we need to go rip some lips. Oh yeah, we'll get some right here. Yeah. We don't need a ton. Do these socks that I have are made by Everglades Fishing Company? like two and a half years and they last forever they got really cool patterns fishing lures and poppers and all kinds of cool stuff i can't believe you got me putting shoes on hey well you could go out and walk across there without <laughs> shoes but it's like a better razor blade you know aubrey my oldest brother fell off a dock face first into oyster bed when he was young and here's a crazy story so Aubrey fell off the dock and completely just annihilated his face. My parents didn't have much money, if any at all, and they had to get plastic surgery done. 
And the doctor, when it came time to pay the bill, told my mom she didn't know him anything. And she's like, what are you talking about? I gotta pay the bill. Well, she had forgotten in all the panic and you know the stress of Aubrey being hurt that she had given the doctor a rabbit that she had raised a couple years earlier. My mom used to raise rabbits. And she had given that doctor one and he fixed Aubrey's face for free. That's what's changed in the world. People, it's like humans have became evil. Like people don't, I mean, not, some of us do, some of you guys do, I'm not saying not everybody, but people have forgotten that way of life that got us to where we're at. People don't do things for each other. They don't call each other. They don't say good morning. I try to do all that stuff as much as possible. I have bad days too, but I'm having a good day today because I'm with my buddy, Ian. As you can see, we got to work on his personality a little bit. <laughs> nothing to be ashamed of. It's hard to get a word in edgewise with Gabe sometimes. Well, I try to make up for your lack of talking, so I talk a lot. I was going to tell you a story now. I don't remember. I've spent tons of time when I was a little kid with my mom picking pieces of oysters out of the bottoms oh, of my feet. Oh, it's the worst. Oh, they get all infected. So this is what we call an oyster bed. And these things don't look it, but they are razor sharp. I don't know how or what would make somebody want to go, look at these nasty, muddy looking things. Let's just eat one raw. I bet the first guy was pretty hungry. I imagine. He was a hungry Indian. Those look good right down there. Those are, I, I've spied them. And they, they, they're in those clumps. So people, oysters just don't sit on the bottom how you see them in the restaurants. You gotta break them apart and bust them down to their individual oysters. And I'm gonna show you in a second how to do it. Do you think that's mana shrimp making these holes? They're, I don't know. They gotta be mana shrimp. What else could they be? You can get mud crabs that live in here and juvenile stone, or stone crabs do as well. So, like I was telling you earlier, oysters, they're not just lying in singles on the bottom. They're in what we call clumps, right? So oysters need to be, in the state of Florida at least, three inches across this way. So make sure you're doing, you know, three inch oysters and there's a smaller one there, but I only want that one. So we take what's called a culling iron, hold the oyster you want and just pop that one off. Now I didn't, I didn't kill that other oyster. It's down in the water and it's gonna keep growing and it'll attach itself to the other oysters but we have this one to eat. And then, so you just start to work through and look for oysters that you want. And it's not a clean business. Mud goes everywhere and uh, we're gonna clean these off real good before we eat them. Uh, what, you, what you wanna look for is you're gonna come out on a low tide and you're not gonna get the oysters that are coming in and out all the time. I like to get the ones down by the water's edge. They spend a lot of time under the water. Um, it's not, it's kind of a rule of thumb. I usually don't start to collect oysters until the water drops below 70 degrees. Uh, so, you know, that's just, that's just something I do. You can do it however you want, you know. Usually about Halloween is when we start and Gabe noticed the water is uh, a little chilly today. It's definitely cold. You can see these oysters right here squirting water. Yep. So anyways, you look through, pick out one you look want. Look at that, look, they're squirting like crazy. It's because they hear me coming. We got some squirters. They're like, nope, not me. Pop them in the bucket. And today, I think we're only gonna grab like a dozen or two and we're gonna char broil them right here on the oyster reef like, look at that little cluster these are all shorts but it's pretty neat to see them like that <laughs> i can't get over them squirting like that and if you notice the water is clear here the water is clear because of the oysters yeah they're good for the environment they filter our water and uh but anyways this method of collecting oysters is referred to as cooning oysters. And I don't know why they call it that, but I like to think that because you're like a raccoon out here getting an oyster on the uh, the low tide. You look like a coon with that beard. <laughs> look at this one. Oh man, I got lucky. 
grabbed him, pulled on him, he come right out. I was gonna show you how to pop another one. Let's see. I also wanna tell you guys, so we are not just out here willy nilly collecting oysters. Don't do that where you live. Um, in the state of Florida, they have shellfish harvesting areas. And you can, I'll have Gabe put a link to the shellfish harvesting areas in the description or we can put it on the screen, however. And the state of Florida monitors the water quality. So you know you're not coming out here and eating dirty oysters. They open and close them. Um, you know, the day of, you check, make sure that they're open. Um, they have a interactive map, it's the whole state of Florida. And it'll show you all the harvesting areas where you live you know so do your do your research figure it out and you can come get your own oysters a lot of people don't realize that you can get your own oysters and when i tell them like oh i got my own oysters they're always all freaked out they're like oh you're gonna eat those oysters you know those could be bad but they'll walk into any restaurant at the beach here yeah, and it. eat some oysters from god knows where that's been in somebody's truck or the deck of a boat you know, these are gonna be the freshest, cleanest oysters you'll ever get. Now, I'm gonna tell you another fact that I do know about oysters. So when we were in California on our last trip with CJ and Cole from North Carolina was with us, I mean this with all due respect and it was very sad hearing it, but his dad passed away from eating raw oysters. They thought, I'm pretty sure they thought he had a spider bite, he got like a red mark on him and it took his life from eating a raw oyster. So there's no chance in the world I'm eating a raw one, <laughs> but we will charcoal one. Cole, we love you. That kid was so awesome. He hung with us and did everything we did, but unfortunately, uh, oyster is what took his dad's life, a raw oyster. And it's just like everything else in life. You can do it a thousand times and survive, but it's that one time that it'll get you. And I ain't taking that chance. But I could sit here and look at these things squirting all day long. It's pretty entertaining. I don't think you would say that this is a kid-friendly sport either. No. Your kid I, could get hurt bad. I mean, unless you really trust your kids, or, or, or probably, I'd say like older than 10 or 12, because if you slip and you fall down in this, it ain't gonna be any fun, man. They're gonna get, you know, infected, and it's just no good. I also think a lot of the reason people maybe get sick from raw oysters is from mishandling, you know, where, it's, you know, they weren't cleaned well, or they sat, like I said, in someone's boat, they got hot, you know, and then they can ice them back down at the place, you know? Uh, so for me, like, if I'm gonna eat oysters, I'd rather know exactly where they came from than buying them from a seafood shop. Now there's water here right this second, but there won't be water here for very long. No. The tide's rushing out. So we're just gonna find a little spot here now if you don't or you haven't followed along for long and seen any of my videos with Ian we've done clamming videos and shrimping videos every video I do with him does really well I don't know if it's the beard or, or the dad bod or what I mean people just like me Dude, I took some heat in my last video by putting too much charcoal on the grill. Too much charcoals, like too much money. There ain't no such thing. No. Well, if you put too much charcoal, you let it burn down. Yeah. But if you don't put enough, you're in trouble. You, you ain't got nothing. Right now we got something. We got a lot of charcoal. And I want to make sure these oysters are plenty cooked. I'd be willing to venture that we're about to eat some of the the freshest oysters anybody's ever ate. I'll be honest, I've never, I've never ate them straight off the, uh, cooked right out here on the reef. Well, you about to. Right, let me get us a couple more. This is my spot for some big dogs. You're like a scavenger right now. It's basically on a scavenger hunt. <laughs> it's basically what you're doing, scavenging for oysters. Find the one you want, it'll be in a clump like that. And then 
you don't want to, I'm not just hitting them willy-nilly, there's a base to the oyster, and so, I'll, oh, see that one came out perfect. Just give it a tap and 90% of the time you get the oyster you want. You know, I'll look around, decide I want this one right here. I'll kind of hold it in my hand. And, and like I said before, so those smaller oysters, they'll keep growing, you know, I'm not killing them. But like, see that, that's the bottom of the oyster I want right there. And I want to take that one off and I'll just clean them up just like that. Now, some people will do clusters if you're going to do an oyster roast or something like that. But I like to uh, get what they call the selects. So the bigger oysters, the hand selects, picking out uh, the best. And our oysters here are not the biggest oysters. There's other places where you get bigger oysters, but they are super salty and delicious. What are you doing now, washing them? Cleaning them off, you know? You don't want to eat them with all that mud on them. Uh, and like I said, I think that sometimes how people may or may not get sick is because they just didn't clean them off good enough. You know what, the only thing that could be worse than eating a booger like an oyster is a muddy, bo muddy booger. <laughs> That's a nice one there. He's thick, boy. Me or the oysters? The oysters. <laughs> <laughs> I like our little grill. So an oyster is going to have like kind of a con concave piece and a flat piece. So start with that flat piece up like that. Take your oyster knife. There's a joint. Come into that joint and push and twist. And then wipe the end off. I just got it popped just a little bit. You work her in there, come down and separate that top shell like that. And then I like to come in and separate the bottom. Just makes them easier to eat in a minute here. So you're not trying to drag it off the shell. And you wanna leave all that good juice in there. Just kind of set them down. That one's gonna run off on me just because the way it is. But, so we'll work through all these. We got the grease, the uh, charcoal going. Oh, it's just right, folks at home. It is just right. So the tide is obviously dumping out pretty fast. So when he's doing this, he's not picking up all of them from right here. He'll get one here, one over there, one over there, one over there. Got a bunch of finger mullet, got some wading birds. Sun's beautiful. I mean, the oysters are squirting get no better it don't get no better Can we talk about how dirty you are though you got <laughs> dirt up on your face it is not you a eat that thing yeah come on <sighs> Golly. don't get no fresher than that just about made me gag <laughs> Golly. i will say they're better when they're cold that's the first straight off the oyster bar oyster i've ever eaten do you know I've what i just eaten. you know what i just thought about the SS Minnow is sitting on dry land now. Oh yeah, we're gonna have to, but it's light enough, we could just pick it up and move it. We filmed uh, Jake's trout video out of this boat. We filmed some pretty cool videos out of this little thing. Little it's thing. a great boat. You know, like if I lost everything in life, if I could just keep this little boat, I could be plenty happy. Materials and, in life. Yeah, yeah. Materials in life. Be living in a van down by the river with this little boat, I'd be plenty happy. I'm telling you. <laughs> so I can do this part. I'm gonna take a little bit of butter. That's garlic butter too. I I, uh, I put some fresh garlic in it before we left at the house. When I got to his house, I was beyond starving. And I went upstairs to work on the ad and his house smelled like the most amazing garlic butter in the world. Plus some bacon. I mean, it's a, you can make any, you can put those three ingredients on just about anything in the world and make it better. Look at that, just a couple chunks of bacon, a little bit of butter, and a little bit of Parmesan cheese. And we're about to have us a feast right here on this salty, muddy shoreline. This is pretty strong smelling garlic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then we're gonna go catch some fish, huh? Yeah, something's gonna die. Man, I was—I spent all morning chasing these oysters down. Yeah, <laughs> they were. 
You yeah, know what I, I? You know how I learned how to catch conch the fastest? I set up trip lines in the Bahamas, and you get the conch herded up and get them running in one direction. They hit that trip line. They're done dealing. Really? Yeah. You've never seen a herd of conch running? <laughs> I have not. <laughs> Well, and, and the limit is for two people, it's like two five gallon buckets, which, or I'm sorry, four five gallon buckets, which is two bushels. Jeez. But we ain't doing that today. I tell you, you pick two bushels of oysters, your back will hurt the next day. So Ian's a tugboat captain. He works all over the country. And right now you're doing trips to Guantanamo, right? Yes, uh, we bring their supply barge down there on a schedule and so everything that those people eat down there and and all their all the supplies for the base and things oh we, you're talking about the u.s soldiers everything they eat not the cubans yes yes yeah. and there's a lot there's there's a lot of just different people that that are working on the base that aren't necessarily um enlisted living down there it's like a whole city it's pretty cool huh. and it's really beautiful they have some beautiful diving and uh coral right off off the beach that you can get to can you smuggle me down there <laughs> <laughs> i heard this guy told me about like a 70 pound cubera and he pointed out where to go get one well did you watch my puerto rico video where the big cubera swim up to the dock while we were cleaning lobster that was I think insane I did. just a random giant cabera swim up to the dock you want some lobster and that's i had exactly one lobster and that was the only thing that the tarpon wouldn't eat we're running low on cheese. All right, well. Goodness, look at the redfish just hit right there. Oh yeah. Where's that rod? Oh. So how about that, folks? How about that? Oh, hot. Hot, hot, hot. I did bring some tongs. I got tongs in my bag, too. You know there's some oyster lovers right now saying, holy mackerel, I wish I was there. I always get people asking me questions. They see me, you know, I'll post on Instagram or whatever, and I I just did an oyster video myself. Um, and people are just always amazed that you can go do this by yourself. And, you know, people who lived in Florida their whole lives and just didn't know. If you don't know, now you know. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. But does it get any better? It does not get any better than that, I can promise you. Here, eat that one. Oh yeah, Ready? I'll just <laughs> I'll just I'll just kick it back real quick. Pro tip, do not eat them as soon as they come off the grill. Look at that deliciousness. Hopefully it doesn't melt my gel coat. We need that big redfish to eat that shrimp I just put out there. Maybe he wants an oyster. That's a, a really good sheep's head bait as well. If you can keep it on the hook. I'm gonna need to lick that butter up. I, you know that's good. This is my uh, Salt Marsh 1444 oyster bar. <laughs> it's crazy now that pretty much all the water's gone out of here crazy how fast it drops yeah now Remember you when see come in here and you're like you're like what and i was like there's supposed to be a huge reef right there yeah but you, i'm glad we came when we did yeah you can clearly see there's no shortage of oysters when we came in it, it didn't look like there was many because we were right over there and only a little pile was out but now and there's still more all out there oh he just hit again they eat your bait that line's moving oh what happened you got him no i ain't I don't know what happened. I don't know how that line went black like that. It was, t oh, you know what it probably did was the current broke the, the Yeah, yeah. No, something hit it, but it wasn't a redfish. If I was a redfish, I'd be on that oyster bar right there too. I had to make sure they weren't poisonous, man. You're cheating. No, I was, I was checking them for you. That one might, this was the first one I took off. <laughs> was it good can you go pick a couple another a couple dozen more of these please 
Look at that. Like that's the ocean. That's the salty. That's the bay right here. That's you know somebody that if someone's like an oyster eater, they'll always ask you, are them oysters salty? And these are some of the saltiest I've ever had. I might be uh, biased since they're my home home oysters, <laughs> but I'd put them up against any of them, any of them out there. You didn't get this one looped. I might not have. Uh, <laughs> I might not have detached all of them. Man. And like I said before, if you do get your own oysters, if you can, take your shells and put them back out uh, on another oystery for where you got them. Because as I understand it, they need those, they need those shells to the little, little microscopic baby oysters attached to the old shells and build off of that. And if you don't put the shells back, then uh, the reefs will shrink. It's hard to describe. Mm. It's you don't get that strong or, or yeah, oyster taste that you would because I have tried raw ones and to me they're terrible. <laughs> this is just like the best piece of seafood you could put in your mouth, and it's some nasty shell that grows in the mud and must have been one hungry Indian. It looks just like a booger. Like not even trying to gross you out. That looks just like a booger. It's got its own unique taste. What do you think? I think that they taste exactly like oysters. Man, you can sit here and cook them Sometimes we do them, we'll do like what's called a roast. And you'll use a grill or a fire or something like that. And if we got like, we'll pile a quarter bushel on there or something like that. And then we'll put wet burlap sacks or wet towels over the tops of them. Yeah. And it'll steam them there. And then when they all just pop open, we'll eat them. That's probably my favorite way. Mm. You get the last one. Last one. My goodness. I was going to take you all fishing in this video, but I think this has been so much fun. We're going to end it and start a whole new one right now. You guys, make sure you check out Ian's uh, YouTube. I'll put it right here once again, and it was also in the beginning of the video. He does all kinds of stuff just like we do in his own little way. He cooks a lot. He's got a lot of awesome recipes. He's a tugboat captain, like I said earlier. So when he's away on the ship, he's actually making videos. He cooks for the crew. It's just a pretty neat experience that he, the life he lives is actually pretty cool. And my handle's the same on Instagram, TikTok, and uh, YouTube. It's Tug Trash. And then on YouTube, it's Tug Trash Outdoors. So give me a, a like and follow. Y'all, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. But like my 12-year-old son Jake always says, it's time to get up out of here and get the heck out of shape. See y'all.